Let us turn to our feet. You are Yahweh, Alpha, Omega. You are Yahweh, Alpha, Omega. You are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. Yes, our God is good. You are Yahweh. bless you and I glorify your holy name. Father God, I pray for your blessings this morning. Lord, as I stand before your children to deliver your message, I pray, oh God, that I may decrease in flesh and let the power of the Holy Spirit increase in me. Amen. I pray this moment, oh God, that when I speak, my voice will not be heard, but your voice, oh Lord. Father God, I pray that this message today will be a blessing to your children. All those who will listen to this far and wide, Father God, will be blessed in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Amen. I plead the blood of Jesus over the four corners of this building, oh God. Amen. And I pray for blessings upon each and every life that is present here today. Amen. Let your voice be heard, oh God. Yes, I do not hope to take any glory for this. Yes. Whatever my message is, let it glorify your name in heaven. Yes. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let us clap for Jesus. Put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It is so wonderful to see all of you here this morning. It is such a great, great, great moment to have you. You know, I don't know how many of you are, lo are always looking forward to come on Sunday so that we can all meet together. And I pray for a time when we will have more time other than Sundays where well, at least we can be meeting and glorifying God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to give uh, a big uh, blessing to my pastor, my senior pastor, Reverend Mustafa Kone. Amen. I pray that God will continue to pour his anointing upon your life Amen. and your family. Hallelujah. Um, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to the book of Psalms. Psalm 133. 133. That is where our message is going to be focused today. Psalm 133. And I want us to read it together. Amen? I want us to read it together. If you are there, say amen. If you're not there, say hold on, Pastor. Hold on, Pastor. Okay. All right, we are getting ready for that. Psalm 133. Are we there yet? Yes. Amen. Let us read together. How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down on the collar of his robe. It is, if, it is as if the dew of Hanan we are falling on Mount Zion. For there the Lord bestows his blessings for even life forevermore. Amen. Our focus today is going to be on verse 1. How good and pleasant is it? It is when God's people live together in harmony. How good and pleasant. You see, I've been longing to bring this message to the glory of God's sanctuary. Because it is a message for me, for you, and for everyone. It is a message of unity. And that is why I title this the spirit of unity. The spirit of unity in the family. Hallelujah. You see, the idea of brothers and sisters living together in unity 
was part of Jesus Christ's high priestly prayer just before the walk to Calvary. Hallelujah. Amen. And in his advanced years, uh, the apostle John pleaded with us to love one another. He pleaded with us to love one another. Why Paul calls us to be of the same mind towards one another, maintaining the same love, united in spirit, and our intent on one purpose. And that purpose is to be united. Hallelujah. Amen. And in his short outburst of praise, we discover King David rejoicing and singing his heart by faith with thanksgiving, saying, Behold, how good and how pleasant is it when brothers live together in harmony. Amen. When we live together in unity. When we live together in peace. For it refreshes the soul and is like a sweet smelling fragrance that ascends to the Lord and glorify his holy name in heaven. I tell you my people, this is one of the songs that Israel would sing to the Lord when they will rejoice as they move or advance on their pilgrimage to Jerusalem. This is a hymn of praise that would echo throughout the land of Israel as God's people travel towards their sacred destination. How good and how pleasant it is when God's children live or dwell together in peace and unity. This is about family. Today, we know that we have families that are not even talking to each other. Hello? I'm not talking about families in the home alone. Even in the church family. Even in the workplace family. You see, even when Jesus Christ was on the cross, at the moment that he was dying, when that flesh was going to die, he united his family. He united his family. He was up there on the cross and he saw his earthly mother, Mary, standing there and his very good friend, John, the apostle, standing and he said to his mother, Mother, behold thy son. Son, behold thy mother. Jesus was the eldest of Mary's children. He had other siblings, remember? But they didn't believe in his mission on earth until his death. <clears throat> but the apostle John believed in him. And so when he was leaving this earth, he wanted to leave his mother in the care of somebody who cares. And so he turned to him and said, Son, behold thy mother. Mother, behold thy son. Have you ever been in a situation where you are traveling and then you have your kids at home or your, your aged parents and then you will run to a neighbor that you trust to say, neighbor, I'm traveling. Please, my mother in the house, they're picking in the house. You are not forgetting him. Have you ever done that? Yes. That is every day with us. Hallelujah. Amen. So, how good and how pleasant is it when God's children dwell together? So as I said, this is a hymn that will echo throughout the land of Israel as God's people travel towards their sacred destination. And I want you to know that we too are on the march towards our heavenly home. But every step that we make towards that day when the Lord will take us to be with him should be a day that we should live together. It should be a day 
that we should live together with our brothers and sisters in Christ in gracious harmony and godly unity. Let us leave all these divisions. Let us put all this malice aside. Let us live in unity, especially in the church. This day should be a day when we live together. Unity does not imply uniformity. But in the body of Christ, there should be a real oneness of spirit on the essential fundamentals of our faith. When we're talking about unity, it does not mean we have to do all the same things together. That's not what I'm talking about. It lays with our faith as Christians that we should be at peace with one another. We should come to church and live in peace. And as pastors, we should live as the body of Christ, not dividing the congregation and tearing God's children apart. <coughs> Unity does not imply uniformity. And so sometimes when we have these lesser subordinate issues, things that are of no sequence, of no consequence to us, things that are of no importance to us, let us put that aside with love and compassion. Hallelujah. Let us not allow any of these causes with any wanting discord that will bring this unity or division amongst us. In families, we know that there are little disagreements or alternative views on minor issues. We will not agree on everything together. But let us approach it with wisdom and grace. If you disagree with a family member, approach it with wisdom and grace. You can also be Allah. Oh no, I don't agree to this and this. Approach it with respect. Sometimes we let little things blow out of proportion. We just blow it out. Little things that are of no consequence. Little things that you can just walk by and let it go. Little things that you can just walk up to sisters at you. Say sisters at you, you know. Why did you know you pass that platform? You must be told her. At least when you put it that way to sisters at you, sisters at you, most of you say, you know, I don't be sure I'm sorry about it. Why are you sisters at you? You know, in the past, you don't see my way, God bless you. What are you expecting? My sister is at you, they're not jealous as a book. Yeah, tell us a book. She's my body, so you know. And she doesn't mind me using her. You know, <laughs> hallelujah. So let us blow these little things out of compassion. Let us approach it with wisdom. Hallelujah. Amen. And in all our dealings with each other, there should be that godly spirit of unity and love. In all our dealings with each other, whether na you pikino, whether na you mamau, whether na you kozino, na you church family, na you with, with your, at your job, please. And let us approach those dealings with godless spirit of unity and love. And one thing I want you to know that there should be patience. That is one thing we don't have these days. We don't have patience. As for our, as for our country, Sierra Leone, we have so run out of patience that even when good things are coming, we are not patient to see what the end result will be. As soon as the, 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 the Decide that you don't like step up today instead of you waiting to see, or let me say, jump on top of that and wait to see what is coming next. Bam! Facebook. We begin course. Every morning, as soon as we wake up, we throw course on our country. Hmm. The power of life and death is in the 
victim. So we are not united. And so I said there should be patience. There should be kindness, gracious love that comes only from the indwelling spirit of Christ Jesus who is our life. For in him our soul is refreshed and we are equipped to edify others which glorifies our Father in heaven. You cannot give what you don't have. If you don't have patience, how can you give patience? If you don't have kindness in your heart, how can you give kindness? If you don't have love, how can you give love? Sometimes even in the home, married couples, they are not patient with one another. Somebody might have been in a relationship that is that hurts them so bad, and when, when God brings in another relationship, they are not going to be patient with that relationship. They want to take that baggage from that relationship and dump it into this one, and then you lose what God has for you. Oh, now, so this one I've been doing it today. This one will come so I've been watching. As if, if he put his shoes there, like, hey, what did you put his shoes there for? We don't have patience. So if you don't have it within yourself, how can you give it to somebody? How can you be patient with somebody? So even in our homes, as our families, we have to be patient with one another. Let us show kindness to one another. Let us be respectful to one another. How good and how pleasant it is when God's children dwell together in unity. And I add peace. And I had love. How good and how pleasant. Hallelujah. <clears throat> All of this, when you give it, will be coming from inside because it is something that is inside of you. Through Christ Jesus, who is our Lord and Savior. And whatever we do will glorify the Father who is in heaven. Hallelujah. We should make every effort to keep the unity of the family through the bond of peace and communication. Hello? Am I speaking to somebody here this morning? We should make every effort to keep the unity in the family through the bond of peace and communication. Talk. Some of you didn't have a challenge. I said, make a bubble, don't set him on the Zip. And sometimes you get some of us, if you don't talk to me, I don't know what is going on with you. That is why me, when you do something, I will tell you. So if you don't come up, if you don't tell me, hey, well, not say that thing, I'm going to do this kind of thing, I don't make this, law, make this, law, make this. If you don't talk to me, I will not even know what you want me to do. Let us communicate. Let us do it in peace. In our homes, let us do it in peace. And in the church, let us do it in peace. At our workplaces, let us do it in peace. <clears throat> you may be offended at work. And you know it is your right. You know that what you're saying is right. You know that what they are accusing you for, you didn't do it. But the method of approach that you will use to clarify that what they are saying is wrong and that what you are saying is right is what counts. You can be peaceful and still pass your message across. And maybe that will hit them so hard that it will get to a point they will come back. Even if they don't say it to your face. But they will come back and say, you know what she was saying is true. And she was so calm or he was so calm. Because of the confidence of God that you have in your heart. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know all these virtues. We must put on the garment of love. Which binds us together in perfect unity. Where unity prevails, there is always love. It is love that brings people together. 
A man shall leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife, and the two shall become what brought them together? Love. Why are we here? It's the love that we have for the church that God has given to us. It is. Hallelujah. So I urge you, my people, to live a life worthy of calling, of the calling that you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. You can tell us and tell you, but when you are patient, you bear with one another in love, you will see the result. In a family, not all of us are as wise as we think. You get some man, they will talk now, like they are. You get some people, that they will talk, they can't. So what you get for happen? What should happen? These two have to create a medium of communication and show that mutual respect and love for one another and try to understand the next person. But we don't do that. And when we don't do that, it breaks the yoke. It breaks that unity that we're supposed to have in the family. So make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. And remember our text. How good and how pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. I'm appealing to you, my brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say, and let there be no divisions amongst you, but that you will be perfectly united in mind and in thought. Hallelujah. The Bible says, bear with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgive each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you must forgive. Sometimes we hold on to grudges for so long that then it becomes a burden in us. And when it becomes a burden, I call it a sin. We hold on to so much grudge that it affects even our own output in life. It affects our output in life. Let it go. You have a life to live ahead of you. Let it go. Because when you carry that burden, when you carry that sin in you, every person that crossed your path is going to be a victim of that vengeful, that vengefulness in you. Every person that crossed your path is going to be affected by that. Somebody will walk up to you not knowing what kind of burden, what kind of grudge you are carrying and maybe try to open up a conversation. But because you have that vengeful spirit inside you, it's a spirit. Because you have that vengeful spirit inside you, your response is going to drive that individual away. It's going to drive him away. Hallelujah. How good and how pleasant it is. When God's people live together in unity. So I'm appealing to you, my brothers and my sisters, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Once again, be with one another. And if you have a complaint against one another, forgive each other. Every family needs to be equipped to resolve conflict and bridge any gap that arises. Every family we have at home is. And a family should be so equipped to bridge any gap that wants to bring division in the family. You know, you have, we have some families because the one individual in the family is richer and the other individual is poorer, if there is a conflict, instead of the family trying to bridge the gap between these two, what would they do? They widen the gap. Because they know that when they go to this one that is richer, they will get something. And this one that is not as rich as that one, they don't, they're, they're not expecting to get anything. So they open up the gap. 
And so what should we do as son? We try to make sure that as soon as we see that gap, because that is what the enemy is looking for, that it will come in a family and try to divide you, so that as soon as you see that gap going, try as best as you can to bridge that gap. That is what the family does. So every family needs to be equipped. Go back and read the book of Ephesians. It's a book about all sorts of relationships. It deals with how an individual can function in the part, in any part of the church. It deals with our marriage family life. It deals with our biological family life. It deals with family life in the workplace. And even in the society that we live in. Hallelujah. So do not let any unwholesome or unhealthy talk come out of your mouth to one another. Hey. Let me say that again. Unwholesome, unhealthy talk come out of your mouth. Some of us, <laughs> some of us, the words that come out of our mouth to our family members, it is as sharp as a two-edged sword. It's like you are hitting them right in the heart. Like I, you know. <laughs> We had one of our powerful actors in Sierra Leone, um, Dennis Treacher, when he was playing Sajo in um, The Merchant of Venice. He said, Itukumi Namehati Tona. That is some of the kind of words that come out of our mouth to our family members because we think that we are better off than them. And so we don't even pick the word, we don't even think before we speak the word. So please, my brothers and my sisters, do not let any unwholesome, unhealthy talk come out of your mouth to one another. But only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is too powerful. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. With whom you are sealed on the day of redemption, I will advise you to, to get rid of every bitterness. Every bitterness in your heart, get rid of it, hallelujah. Every rage, every anger, get rid of it, hallelujah. Every brawling, every slander, get rid of it, along with every form of malice today. Every form of malice, get rid of it. Because if those things are in your heart, there will be no peace in the family. There will be no unity in the family, hallelujah. So be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ, God, just as in Christ, God has forgiven you. Let me say this before I close. Family is structured on the principles of unity. Family is structured on the principles of unity. Whether it is home family, whether it is marriage, whether it is church, whether it is workplace, or even as friends coming together to build a friendly family, it is structured on the principles of unity. And unity is capable of bathing a family. When you are united, you don't need to come from the same mama and papa. You can become a family. Hallelujah. Whether or not people are related by blood or marriage, they can become a family when there is unity of purpose. Why do all these organizations call themselves sisters and brothers? They were not brought from the same mother and father, but it is the unity of purpose that brought them together. That is why they call themselves a family. Hallelujah. Reasonably, a powerful prayer for unity in the family becomes the most important prayer that you can say for the family. I have a friend who once asked me, I'm not asked, she said it to me, that whenever you pray, you always pray for unity and peace in your family. I say, yeah. That is one thing that I need because the devil can always come in between. <clears throat> So I need that strength of peace and unity in my family. Hallelujah. So you should be, when you pray, that is the most powerful prayer. 
that you can pray yourself for the family. The prayer of unity. A family is an essential unit in the sight of God. As much as the family could be regarded as a social institution, it can also be seen as a spiritual entity. The family can also be seen as a spiritual entity. It is therefore important that the family is united to achieve all these functions that the society and God wants them to perform. So when there is no unity in the family, there is no way. Ah, this part. When there is no unity in the family, there is no way it won't affect the upbringing of every child that is born in that family. Tell me I'm not saying the truth. If there is no unity in the family, any peculiar born is under that confusion in the deeper. Because that is what he came to meet. That is what is happening in the family. And when he is growing up, that is what he meets in the family. I always say, when you are in, when you are in a marriage and you are in your home and you have little children, when you wake up in the morning, mommy and daddy, you give yourself a hug and a kiss, hide the honey, I'm off to work, and then you go. That is what the kids are going to see. And that is the way they are going to grow up. Because they want to get up in the morning. Mommy, I'm going to school. Daddy, I'm going to school. Give them a kiss and give them a hug. But when they get up in the morning, and maybe the kids will be sleeping. They're, they're in my mind, bam, 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 all over the place. And the kind of words that will be coming out of their mouth. Those kids, they have, how do we call it? What kind of brain? And Diana, please help me. What kind of brain? Photographic. Photographic. Photographic memory. Memory. When you say those words and they keep it inside. And they see that vengefulness, that fight every morning. And in America, especially the boys, they say it's cool. That's the way to treat a lady. You see the way that you treat them. That's, that's, the way, that's the way to do. And when he gets married, that's what he's going to start doing. And for the girls, when their mom is always cussing on their dad, they will look at it and dad is always quiet. Sometimes men don't talk. Men don't talk. But men, I, I will tell you, are almost the most tortured creatures on this earth. Even in our marriages. We keep it inside. We suck it in. And that is why sometimes <laughs> some men will just get up one day and say, I'm tired. You ask them, say anything, they'll tell you, say, no, nothing. It is not every man that will want to, to throw his wife's bad character out there. No, you know what he is? This is so do me. Not every man wants to do that. Because in as much as maybe the relationship is not working, but he still has respect for that wife not to go and say everything out there instead they will just walk some have their own reasons why they will walk but i'm just saying what i'm saying here in the line of unity and these young girls when they are home and they see their mom disrespecting their father or their stepfather guess what is going to happen they're going to look at it oh okay this is it <laughs> and when i grow up that's what i'm going to be treating my mind don't try it <laughs> because you'll not be as lucky as others for some of them to just walk away. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, a family is an essential unit in the sight of God. And like I said earlier, it can also be seen as a spiritual entity. There is nothing as fulfilling as a family that stands together in unity. The merits of this great deed cannot be overemphasized because the Bible says one will pull a thousand and two will pull ten thousand. Because when the family is united, we are stronger together. Amen? This established the fact that families will achieve more and more and more when they are united. Let me give you an example. We don't see it in our community because in our community we are, we are all greedy. 
Everything should be about us and should not be about the next person. The Spanish people, when they come here, they will take one house. And all of them, all their people that are coming from the Rico, this co, that co, that co, all the co's, <laughs> when they come, you will see them in there. And they will be building up themselves. Before you know it, you see this one come out, they have found another house for that one, they go. And they start bringing their own. Have you ever gone to these Chinese stores? How many black people have you seen working there? They are all the cleaners and at the back. Even now, they stop, stop giving them to the cleaners. Because they are they trying to be united as their family, their Chinese family. And that is why, that is what keeps them going. But for us, <laughs> you get a business and you say, I ah, call me to this, a lot of people, they don't help me. Or Africans, let's put it that way because they are all the same anyway. When they come, the first thing they will do is try to find out how you got the money. <laughs> ah, the, how did she get the money to start this kind of business? And the next thing, call me to. No. So, I, I, you know how old you are. That's where the discord starts. But I tell you, I go back again. The Bible says that one will pull a thousand, and two will pull ten thousand. This is established fact that families will achieve more when they are united. However, however. <laughs> the two cannot work together unless they I agree. The two cannot work together. Come on, say it with me, unless they I agree. Uh -huh. So if we are not in agreement, how can we be united? If we are not in agreement here at the glory of God's angel, how can we be united? Hallelujah. What this means is that the success or failure of any family will be based on the unity that exists within that family or the lack of it. Or the lack of it. Amazingly, when families hold hands together to pray, that is going to be my last point. When families hold hands together to pray, I'm telling you, my people, it spells doom in the kingdom of darkness for the enemy because we are bonded together. Our bond is so strong as a family. When we hold our hands to pray, it spells doom for the kingdom of darkness because God respects a unity of purpose and the devil knows that. God respects a unity of purpose and the devil knows that. And because the devil knows that, do you know what the devil tries to do? The first thing that the devil will try to do is to steal from the family the spirit of unity. That is what the devil does. Where there is unity, he comes there and steal that spirit of unity and then there is disarray there is discord there is fighting there is backstabbing there is everything that is not good in the sight of God so if you are home when you are praying as a family let it be bonded in love and unity and peace Hold your hands together. That the devil will not be able to break that chain. Hold it together. Because that is the chain that binds you in the sight of God. As a family. That is united in love. And in peace. And in unity. How good. And how pleasant. It is. When the children of God. Dwell together. In harmony. Let us rise. Hallelujah. I want us to pray. We're going to pray for the family. Amen. Amen. Because the enemy is walking his logic. These are the kind of messages that the enemy don't want you to hear. He wants me to come here and tell you about how you're going to get rich tomorrow. So you don't even care how you get the money. You just get rich. Hello? 
And he doesn't want you to listen to this kind of message that when you go back home, you can be able to implement these messages in your homes. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to receive, uh, um, say these prayers after me. If you can, just raise your hand. Father Lord, I pray to you today concerning my family. I ask that you will teach us to be united in the name of Jesus. I come against every power and scheme that may want to create a disparity in our means. I destroy such powers in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that you will cause us to have a unity of purpose. You will make the vision clear to each of us that we may uniformly run by in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I pray for your undiluted love. Teach us how to love ourselves dearly. In the name of Jesus. Father God, I pray that you will block every access that the devil is creating to cause dispute in my family. I pray that you will prevent it in the name of Jesus. I pray that you will give us all the spirit of tolerance. Let us be able to tolerate ourselves. I know that we are different people despite being in a family. But I pray that you will grant us the grace to be able to tolerate one another. In the name of Jesus. I ask that you will grant us the privilege and the grace to forgive ourselves whenever we cross one another. In Jesus' name we pray. Lord Jesus, your mercy, I pray, oh God, that you will teach your children to be silent when they are angry, that you will give them the utterance when they are furious, oh God, so that they will know the words that will come out of their mouth. Lord, the scripture says that a house divided against itself will not stand. I come against every power of division in the family by the blood of the Lamb. The Bible says how good and pleasant is it for brothers to dwell in unity. I ask that you help us to continue walking in unity in the name of Jesus. We do not want to fail our purpose as a family, Lord. Help us to stand and live in love forever in Jesus' precious name. Amen. God be with you. Amen. Amen. Pastor David Vandy, the founder of the Vandy Christian Network. VCN, the Vandy Christian Network, has a vision to bring the gospel truth to all via the internet, the radio, and television with a focus on social values, faith, restoration, health, and understanding the Bible in the simplest possible way. The concept of faith that even nothing happens, you still trust God. VCN has a 24-hour radio emission featuring gospel artists from across the continent. Their YouTube are specially designed programs for all audience size, age, and type. The Encounter. The Word, Time for Tea, Cheche Pole, A Walk Through the Scriptures, Kiddie Street, just to name a few. So, I want you to be a part of this happy family. Join VCN or Vandy Christian Network on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. VCN is your go-to channel.